Hello everybody, I'm Jesse, sitting across from me is Jay Purcell. Oh, should have cut out that audio. What's going on <laughs> at the end of that song? Just uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm Jesse, this is uh, Jay, sitting across from me. No Hello. one's uh, been introduced, the Hello. founder of Signal Radio. Hello everybody, welcome along. What's up? the Grooves. Podcast world, we're hyped yeah. to be here. We're talking about Slow Pulp. Slow Pulp. Anybody heard of them? I hadn't. I hadn't. You hadn't? None of, nobody's <laughs> heard of them. I picked them, but uh, I picked them because I saw recently they were supporting All Vays. Mm -hmm. Who you and I saw. Uh, you saw them, but we did an episode on All Vays. Right? That's right. No, um, they opened up for the Strokes when we saw them at, at the WAMU. Oh, shit. There you go. Which yeah, we, yeah. we just kind of... We, we, we talked about that. We were drinking in the bar whilst they were playing. Yeah, we weren't like, there for yeah. them. We didn't know them at that time. It was yeah, a yeah. coincidence. Right. Yeah. And we discovered them after the fact. Yeah, yeah. But so we do have a little bit of connection to always. Yeah. Do the, is it always or always? I was just thinking that I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. I always. I think it's pronounced always. Spelled. But it's always. spelled always. Yeah. yeah. Always. Um, good band. Good band. So they're, Slow Pulp has toured with them as an opening act. Yeah. Currently they're touring with them like all over the U.S. They nice. just played in Seattle. Uh, they're in California next and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I hadn't heard of them. I saw the billing and I was just like, okay, well this will be interesting because always are an interesting band mm -hmm. and. Uh, just went to Spotify, listened to a couple of their tracks and liked what I heard. And I didn't go any further than that. I was just like, I sent you the suggestion. And then I was like, well, we'll research well, it later. And we're see here what to <laughs> learn and discover along the way. Yeah. So, so, I mean, what are we talking about? Always 
a similar style of band, which is why they're touring together. Yeah. It's kind of 90s alternative, mm -hmm. um, you know, almost, uh, what do you call it, like slow or uh, shoegazing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. kind of just some, I mean, it's very chill. Mm -hmm. It's pretty intimate. Yeah. They have a little bit of a grungy kind of vibe. Yeah. I would say a little more grungy than always. Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. they're a little bit more, you know, I don't know. We're talking about indie rock, though, essentially. Yeah. They're yeah. like a quintessential indie rock sound. Yeah. Really soft, chill, pretty melodies and, you know, just vocals in general. Yeah. Um, from Emily, the singer. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Emily Massey's the singer. We got Teddy Matthews in the band. Henry Stoll, 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 Stoll. Stoll. Yeah, I pronounce it. Yeah, Stoll. 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 No disrespect. <laughs> and Alex Leeds. Right. Yeah. So four piece out of uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, four piece, basic kind of indie rock setup: drums, guitar, vocals, bass. Mm -hmm. No keys, I don't think. Not. Not that I saw. Yeah, not live and not on the recordings. Yeah. But when they play live, I have seen they have a percussionist just doing some shakers and tambourines. Yeah, and a, and an additional guitarist, I think, doing right. some extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And great sound. They played at KEXP. Yeah. They did a really great set and interview yeah. at home. KEXP. Yeah. Um, and it was very good. Yeah, it's it's a very competent band. Yeah, good music, good writing. Yeah, the stuff they talk about seems very cool. I like the lyrics. And yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well-rounded, nice indie rock music. Uh, if you really like, if you're kind of nostalgic for nineties indie say. rock music, yeah, I think this band is like perfect for that because. Mm -hmm. You can kind of get sort of uh, Smashing Pumpkins vibes a little yes. bit from them and stuff like that. Um, Agree. Like, yeah, not not the Nirvana side of things, but more, yeah, like, I can't really think of any other band. I mean, Hole, maybe, like Courtney Love's band had a few songs that's mm -hmm. similar-ish. Yeah. Them, like the on the, the lighter side of Hole's back catalog kind of thing, maybe. Mm -hmm. Bush, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, not that sort of stuff. Like, those yeah. similar vibes, but yeah. just not so heavy. Yeah. Not heavy. And if, in fact, you know, they have one debut album out. Yeah. We didn't say that yet. Yeah, yeah. So they're, this is a, a new band. Yeah. You know, they started in the, the you know, 2017 or so. Yeah. Um, 2015, I think, is when they started releasing EPs. Fair um, enough. But, but yeah, we'll talk about that because I guess it was like a lineup change kind of thing and stuff like that. So, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but they like this one album has a lot of acoustic guitar kind of serving as the backbone for the tracks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's pretty interesting. So it's very, it's pretty chill and low key yeah. singer songwriter yeah. type vibes, yeah. but kind of with a grunge aesthetic yeah. and uh, you know, a nostalgic yeah. kind of callback. And, and like one or two, especially on their debut album, one or two like, e like electronic -y type things. Like Ooh. they got like some sampled beats or something in there. Okay. There was like one track that was kind of like, funky or something it was like mm -hmm. a short thing but yeah uh, I, the, like uh, we were gonna play that one i'm not sure if it ended up on oh, our final list i think it did yeah maybe yeah okay we'll, we'll see when we we'll get see. there <laughs> but yeah very cool band it was yeah. exciting learning about them and seeing what they're all about yeah and i'm about it it's very it's just very chill music very easy to get into yeah. and and put on and you know drive yeah. clean yeah do whatever you want it's just very good vibes yeah uh let's play another track to give people more of a taste mm -hmm. uh, what are we playing jay this one off of their debut album, Movies, At It Again, kind of, uh, for me, probably one of our, the most upbeat tracks from the album. I liked it, kind of driving sound. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 
it again from Slow Pulp from their debut album, Movies, of a unique spelling, M-O-V-E-Y-S, Movies. Yeah, not like you're going <laughs> to the movies. Yeah. Um, More like, I, or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Did you, did you find the meaning of that spelling? No. Nah. I didn't see that, but yeah. I thought, I remember an interview where they asked about it, uh, but I don't think there was a great answer. Uh. <laughs> or I just don't remember. Yeah, one or the other. Um... But take us back in time, Jesse. What do we? What do you know about <laughs> slow pulp <laughs> early days? All right, it is yeah. now 2015. Uh, Actually, let's go even further back. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, need okay. Sound effect for that. Yeah. 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 Input the sound. Yeah. Um, whoever edits this video, we don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's go all the way back. So Henry and Teddy, mm-hmm. um, they all met in like sixth grade. They knew each other from a long time ago. All right. Yeah. And Alex met them both when they were all at music lessons in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. As far as I know, the story goes, that's kind of where they met. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. We forgot to say that. It's where all of the band members are from. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, like you said, those two guys and then the third guy. Uh, so like Henry and Teddy right. were like already kind of tight friends, I think. Right. And then they met Alex right. in the music lessons and then they were a trio right. of, you know, buddies. Yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, and actually, one step further, I think Henry and Teddy knew each other since kindergarten. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Yeah. Technically. So yeah, they were yeah. friends. They were tight. They met Alex in music lessons as adolescents. Yeah. And then when they m- went to college, they met Emily. Right. At uh, I didn't see what college it was. Okay. Yeah, college yeah. of Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. That's what I call it. Right. <laughs> they were still in Madison. They didn't leave. Oh, I don't know. As far yeah. as I know, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, not yet. Not yet, yeah. They are... Oh, from Chicago now, technically. I don't know if they're cool on my Chicago band, but right. they didn't all move there later on. Um, but yeah, like you say, the trio were making music themselves mm-hmm. um, under the name of Slow Pulp, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and doing that for a few years. I don't know, their first EP they released was called EP1. It was released in 2015. I really think. creative names. Yeah. Uh, and it was out for a while, I think, but uh after emily joined they took it off i think so the most earliest recording you can find of slow pop right now is 2017 ep ep2 not the creative name like you say what look at them go (laughs) um and then yeah that features emily um but i think when she joined she they they kind of described her as like an occasional vocalist it that's Um, the impression i got she would kind of pop into sessions yeah just kind of casually right making music with them and she wasn't uh, you know, official member of the group. Yeah. And uh, I listened to this EP. There's only like four tracks. It's pretty good. Uh, but it is like mostly the guys. I'm not sure who is singing on it. Maybe it is Alex, I think. Alex leads. Uh, but it's mostly like male vocal driven. And then she's kind of in the background, like adding like melodies and stuff like that. I see. Um, so not like fully integrated yet. And I have a little... Clip. Let's play a clip. Let's yeah. let's all listen in and, and see some of this early slow pulp. I mentioned it was mostly a male vocal driven EP and I, I realized I picked the one that had most of Emily on it oh. vocal, vocal wise. I was going to say, it sounds yeah. like her, but it sounds very good. Yeah, it kind um, of reminds me a little bit of War Paint, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit, uh, which is cool. Um, but yeah. I she, like the kind of discordant guitars yeah, yeah. flailing about in that track. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good EP. It's out there. Bang Bang Camp. On Spotify as well, actually, by the way, I should say that. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, and then there were a four piece. Um, a quartet, you a could quartet, say. quartet, yeah. And then 
at a certain point, they all decide to move to Chicago, right? I don't know if we have any info in between the music and the moving, but like, no, uh, I'm yeah. just yeah, just vague information. But, but I yeah, think they yeah. were just making music and getting closer and bonding and yeah. and moving towards this goal of creating this album. Basically, yeah. is is the story we're telling? Yeah, um, yeah. It, everything, all roads lead to. The debut album movies right. basically um and so we're talking yeah. like 2019 is when they move um or is it what? yeah i think so around then it's vague uh, vague information yeah they we, haven't really explicitly said i don't think i anyway. didn't hear him say explicitly either anywhere that i saw in video interviews yeah. or written interviews all i know is initially they all moved together and lived in the same house mm -hmm. um which is a cool move yeah and the uh, obviously it was a band decision it sounded like mm -hmm. the to go to Chicago kind of thing. Um, interesting, I'm not sure why, is it like the, I guess it's the biggest, closest city to where right. they're from. Um, but also musically, it's, it's interesting there right now. We did an episode on Sen Morimoto. He's not from Chicago, but he moved to Sh Chicago. Right. Uh, no Name, which I don't think we've done an episode on. She's like a hip hop artist. She's out there as well. But Chicago seems to have a big scene going on with like, R&B, hip hop, and I guess rock music as oh. well. Like, yeah. Maybe that's yeah. what it, I was just yeah. gonna say, people like to go there to see that big bean. Oh, I don't know. That big Never bean been, mirror. Big, is there a big bean, is that the? It's like a, a bean that's a mirror. <laughs> and it's just sitting on the ground somewhere in the city. This is Chicago's tourist attraction. Yeah, that, okay. I right. think it's yeah. that, or, yeah. you know, they wanna see Sears Tower. That's Sears where I would wanna Town. go. That's go why I would Sears move Town. there if I was I had to move. Just to go see Sears Tower. Or the yeah. bean. Yeah. So you got those two things. Yeah. Wasn't it? There wasn't someone else from there. Isn't it the Windy City? It's windy too, yeah. I think we talked about this recently it's on an episode. The Windy the City. Windy City. Yeah. So out of America, if you like wind, beans, and tall buildings, Chicago's your spot. Didn't they have a little mafia shit as well in the past, maybe? Oh, Al yeah. Did we, or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't I know. So. I don't know. I feel like I've seen a documentary <laughs> or two. Um but yeah. At Logan Square is the neighborhood they moved to. Uh, I don't know anything about this place, but uh, for Chicago Gins, maybe you know. Um, <laughs> Chicago okay. Chicago Gins? Sh Chicago. Chicago. Um, Chicago. Uh, yeah, but now, but then event, they're all still in Chicago now, but they moved out. They have different apartments, I think, because when COVID happened, they talked about how they were all separate and stuff like that. Right. But to tie that in, they were living yeah. in the same house and producing music. Yeah. And um, they got the skill, like they would have, they would be producing music in their own separate rooms. Right. And while they were doing that, even though they're in the same house, they would still like send music or clips or yeah, ideas yeah. to each other yeah. in separate rooms. Yeah. Um, and so they kind of learned how to do that and got really good at it. Yeah. Then the pandemic struck in the middle of production of the album and yeah. they all had to go their separate ways. Yeah. And they still retained that skill because that's what they were already doing in the house in Chicago. Right. Which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so like it started with them all making music in the same house. They got separated and then they finished the album, uh, you know, separately over the internet. Yeah. Sending stuff to and fro. Yeah. yeah. And I think like, I guess maybe this just leads us into their creative approach then a little bit. Like, I guess, I mean, but, let me still dive on into the 2017 to 2019 era. All right. Yep. So this is still early. We're talking yep. about um, EP2 2017 that comes out and uh, it's called Big Day. Mm -hmm. And it was it's nervy, innovative rock. I just put some notes, um, you know, just blending some of these other genres that they're kind of swirling around. Yeah. Good melodies, cool arrangements. Um, yeah, that's all I got on Big Day. Yeah, Big but Day, EP. Right. Yeah. And so just a little more information on kind of what was going on because around this time they're in chicago and you know about the accident emily's um, parents yeah mm -hmm. so they got into a like, pretty bad car accident yeah and that kind of put them up and made life really hard for them yeah they called to emily to come kind of take care of them yeah. called on their fam like yeah we need a little bit of help she went moved back to wisconsin to take care of them and she found herself in the kind of position of being a caretaker yeah and that's right in the middle of when they were making this album. Yeah. And then also some around this time, Emily had been feeling kind of like lost or depressed and kind of feeling like weird and kind of tired and sleeping all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was frustrating for the band because she was sleeping all day. Mm. 
just kind of a weird moody thing and yeah. she didn't know what it was eventually she got diagnosed with chronic mono mm. and lyme disease right yeah and apparently i think it's justin bieber who also has yeah. the, both of those two diseases yeah she said that i think in an interview yeah <laughs> it's like the one other person on earth interesting yeah because it's not a super common thing it's a bit of a double whammy right because they're not related they're separate illnesses but to have mm -hmm. both yeah right so, so it's like, yeah completely yeah. coincidental yeah i know i didn't really know much too much about these uh diseases so i kind of looked them up but it's it's sort of um like muscle soreness right is it flu-like symptoms from from lyme disease yeah like feeling um, weak but fatigue like with the combination of them both yeah a lot of fatigue and right soreness and flu and yeah so she's just yeah. feeling like kind of bad yeah, yeah. not good yeah. like i'm guessing like that flu symptoms like you feel like you're all sore kind of yeah, yeah. achy but that was making things hard for her and when she got diagnosed she was able to clearly um you know see what was going on and then yeah. take measures to help out her own health yeah and that made things way easier for her yeah because it's one thing to feel a certain way but then to know actually what's wrong with you mm -hmm. then you're like oh i know the treatment now then you can get on a treatment and and mentally, but, yeah. it's like, yeah. wow, I know what the problem is and I can solve the problem now. Yeah, yeah. Or at least help out and make it, you know, mitigate these symptoms. Yeah. Because she said it was, yeah, making her sleep all day and, and it bled into kind of how she was feeling about the music, I think. Like, she said they were writing a lot of things, but she wasn't, like, really feeling it. She felt, like, emotionally detached from the music they were writing or something like that. And Yeah, so they would um, almost finish a track, but they she wouldn't have the energy basically to yeah. to finish the track so they would like kind of scrap it put it off to the side yeah, yeah and it was just becoming a frustrating thing where they're putting a lot of work into this the the band's working and producing yeah but then it doesn't really get used for the album and it's kind of you know awkward kind of yeah. not good vibes yeah um but obviously it was pretty much due to these Ill illnesses mm -hmm. and that was completely remedied when she figured it out and got diagnosed yeah, yeah. um but overall mm. kind of a crazy couple of years because they're having this come up with their band yeah having some you know the car accident with her parents and she is involved in that and then her own illnesses yeah. Yeah, going yeah. on so a lot a lot going on for emily at that time yeah a lot and i and i think they uh, like they were saying they intended to do the debut album earlier um and that's kind of why that big day ep came about i think because it was sort of kind of I think they planned to do an album then, but instead scrapped a lot of songs and did the Big Day EP instead kind of mm -hmm. thing. And then after that was out, really sort of doubled down on the album idea. And then, yeah, but, but this story of Emily's kind of personal strife kind of bleeds in between both of these things as well. Totally. Because um, I know, like, they mentioned something about a cabin that they went to and they were trying to write and record, mm -hmm. like, there and... They said it was haunted or something, and oh, they, that's right. They said they were all so scared that it had a four bedroom, had four bedrooms, but they all slept on sleeping bags in the living room floor every night next mm -hmm. to each other. Yeah, and she said when the guys went out to go grocery shopping, she'd just be crying in the bathroom or something. Like that. Yes, I don't well, know about those vibes. So it sounds stressful, and I think nothing came of that trip because they were like, yeah, it was too, it was too much, like right. nothing's happening, kind of thing. But so a lot of energy, but they didn't know yeah. where to to put the right energy. It was just kind of yeah. mixed. Yeah. They were figuring things out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but things were lining up for them. Um, do yeah. we do we have a track to play off of Big Day? Yeah. Before we go too much further. Yeah, yeah. let's and play this track. Uh, New Media.
New Media by Slow Pulp from their EP, Big Day. Uh, it's weird. It has like 80s vibes, but not 80s production, which is mm -hmm. good. I like that. And it's interesting. It's good yeah. overall yeah. compared to the track we played to before that clip yeah. of the previous EP. You know, it yeah. sounds like a step up. It's definitely like one of those bands that is coming more into focus with their sound. And Correct. I think they've kind of said that themselves as well because... Uh, um, they sort of worked in different ways. Like you said, they did the separate thing kind of thing. But, but also, um, I think they said up until Big Day or maybe er around this time as well, that they mostly, the guys wrote like complete kind of instrumental songs mm. and then sent them to Emily to like um, put her stuff over. And they said that was kind of working, but also maybe not. And so they wanted to change that up. And so what they've done now is when they have like a chord progression or an idea or a riff or something, instead of finishing it off, they'll immediately send it to Emily and then she'll kind of work with that. And it's more of a back and forth kind of thing. Um, so she's, mm -hmm. I think the way they said it is she's integrated in the writing process at much earlier on now than right. before kind of thing. Like, before yeah. they were, yeah. like you said, just to reiterate, like try to build a whole song yeah. and then just slap some vocals on top. Yeah. And yeah. that's their you know, way to get to the, the final track. Yeah. yeah. And I think they were feeling it just, you know, it just wasn't working. Yeah. It didn't sound as cohesive as they thought it could be Yeah, for what they were going for. And I think it's a natural progression, right? Because they started as a three piece doing this and then Emily joined and then they sort of integrated her and now she's even more integrated in mm -hmm. the writing process kind of thing. So it just kind of seemed like it naturally had to happen and it's great that they sort of realized that before their debut album mm -hmm. really like um yeah, they put yeah. in a lot of work like this is yeah. where they cut their teeth like trying to figure out their own production style and technique yeah um you know as as humans in a group yeah so it's really cool to see the progression and hear it through the the albums as they come out the the, the yeah. tracks the music yeah, yeah um and yeah so movies let's um, talk movies movies comes out yeah 2020 right yeah 10 songs 10 tracks yeah short though something like 26 minutes i think but yeah that is pretty yeah. short yeah but it can almost count as an ep yeah i'm not sure like I, I definitely read somewhere it might be on wikipedia that officially an album has to be over 30 minutes that's what i thought i, I think i read that somewhere i read that like, too when i released yeah. my candy flowers music i was like is this an album or right. is, is yeah, it an yeah. ep or what and i was looking that up and i thought yeah. i saw the same thing but i think we live in the age of short albums now for some reason i don't know why because it's either short cohesive albums or like yeah. double albums like chili peppers yeah yeah chili two double albums in one year yeah like, okay <laughs> just 70, off. 70 80 minutes yeah. yeah i mean that's crazy but um yeah it's interesting because each song is still like you know three minutes four minutes like you know but mm -hmm. um but yeah this is a really good album um it's uh I mean, where do we want? There's so many different things to say about this. What, well, where should we start? <laughs> the writing, how it came together. Um, I mean, we kind of, right. we kind of been jumping around that. a little bit. So yeah. they, they went to the haunted house, right? You know, they had moved yeah. to Chicago. They went yeah. to the haunted house. They tried new things. Um, I mean, I feel like we already kind of told the story of how they got to the album. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, but the other thing that Emily was going through, and uh, once they sort of found their stride to write songs, I think. Um, it was the use of acoustic guitar or the introduction of acoustic guitar that kind of really um, changed, re-inspired them, I think. Because I feel like it sounds like they're in a bit of a writing rut. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, and I think, uh, I want to say it was either Alex or Henry was listening to a lot of acoustic singer-songwriter music. Like, like folky stuff. Yeah, like folky stuff and um, getting inspired by that. And, and when they started writing on acoustic guitar, I think uh, there was a track, let me see, was it called Montana? Yeah, I think that was like the first one they wrote with acoustic guitar. That, mm. that they were like, oh, this should be the direction of the album. And it was interesting because I think when they first started out, Emily said, oh, we're going to make a heavy album. We want it to be like, pre like yeah. on the heavier end. <laughs> but then it wasn't working out. And then they got, they, she found more of an emotional attachment to like these acoustic ideas and riffs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, oh, that's the direction. So there's still some like upbeat stuff on here, like that track at it again, the second track we played tonight. But uh, 
but there's a lot more of that acoustic stuff coming through, especially on the totally. opening track and stuff the, like that. Yeah, throughout the album, yeah. the, the acoustic guitar is kind of the home bass, yeah, holding down, yeah. you know, the glue for the track, yeah. And that was kind of the catalyst for allowing their creativity to kind of really blossom, right? As far as yeah. creating the tracks for the album, yeah. And <clears throat> that was like the the last little missing piece for them yeah. to really get in the groove of producing tracks all the way through and and yeah. really vibing with each other yeah definitely yeah and so it worked yeah album came out um a lot of good energy i don't have any information on um like exactly how they got signed and got on tour with always yeah that's just the other part of it um how they're sort of getting blowing up a little bit they've been mm -hmm. man managing to get on tours with different people mm -hmm. um Alex G is an artist that they previously went on tour with, who I hadn't heard of. That um, did seem like, I didn't hear about him either, but it yeah. did seem like he's a pretty good, yeah. respected artist, and they got hooked up with him, and that yeah. that led to bigger things yeah. after that relationship. Yeah, and then like we say, they're currently on tour with Always, and get this, they're going to Europe on tour with Death Cab for Cutie. So mm. that's the next, another next level. Well, speaking of yeah. which, isn't yeah. Death Cab for Cutie in town today? They might be. They are from Seattle, so. Well, so they're always in town. I know. We were talking about this the other day. There's a lot happening today in in Seattle on this Thursday that we're recording. I think. That's right. But, yeah. Um, let me. I'm going to look up Death Cab for Cutie talk for a couple seconds. Okay. Today. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the other part about these tours, which is really good. They fight helps find an audience. I think you know Death Cab for Cutie. I feel are pretty big. I like, okay, that's yeah. enough, Jay. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I got great. The, <laughs> yeah, good. Death Cat for Cutie's playing the 26th and 27th yeah. at the Paramount. Oh, shit. With okay. Chong the Nomad. Chong the Nomad? Yeah. She, Fan? Isn't she, uh, she's been to our studio, right? Shayhan knows her. I, th I thought. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Damn, okay. Well. So, I mean, yeah. she got a great spot. Yeah, she's a good uh, Seattle-based artist. That's pretty uh, rad. Uh, that's, this is my first time seeing it, so I yeah, had no yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, damn. It feels like I feel like the music she does is a bit different than them. Though. They're more indie rock, right? Definitely. I, I thought it was different. Yeah, yeah. But there's they still got the local vibe going. Local vibe. Yeah, that's the the connection between the two yeah. artists, I guess. Yeah, I feel like uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's a connection with Seattle for slow pulp somehow. But if you go on their Wikipedia page, their photo is the, of them playing is in Barbosa. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. So they did There's a show not... there? Yeah. With Always or without Pre? Uh, I don't know. It's just, there's no description. It's just like the main photo on their Wikipedia pages of them playing in Barbosa at Seattle. Thank nice. you. Right on, right on. Um, but yeah, this album, the rest of it, Mosey. I'm not Mosey. Oh my God. Movies. Mo movies. Mosey on. Mo to movies mosey on through this album yeah um the other thing is about emily's dad right did you see about this about her dad oh and yeah, yeah so he's yeah. he's on that track yeah yeah i mean go for it uh yeah michael massey is his name um he's a working musician himself he has a slew of uh his own solo albums out there in mm -hmm. the world i didn't really listen to any of his stuff but i think he's a piano player is like one of his main instruments that's my impression primarily piano player and uh yeah during the production of this album for slow pulp he was still recovering from the car crash mm -hmm. and emily moved back home to be with her parents and he hadn't played for a while he was just concentrating on recovering and uh two things happened there one uh i think one of the guys in the band wrote like a piece on piano kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then she got the idea, of, well, it'd be nice for him to sort of play it, you know, get back into playing again. Mm -hmm. It was like sort of help his... Right, take, she said he hadn't know. played anything like since the the accident. Yeah. Up yeah. until when she asked him to get into this Yeah, this and this track. sounds like a pretty bad accident. So like to take his mind off of that and the pain and stuff like that to get back into music. Um, he ended up reco recording, like reinterpreting what he was sent the piano idea in his own way um mm -hmm. and then he recorded that for the album i forget which track it is right now off the top of my head um but it's like kind of in the middle of the album i think um uh it's called whispers whispers there you go in the outfield it's the seventh track on the album cool i gave that one a listen yeah i'm not trying to say anything but i don't know i feel it feels a little <laughs> out of place for me 
It did a little bit. It sounded a little bit uh, prod rock piano to mm-hmm. me or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. They just... But. That's all I got to say. I'm not trying to criticize. Uh, uh, but the other thing Emily did, she uh, hit her dad like engineered the recording of her vocals. Right. I saw that as well. Yeah. She recorded most of her vocals for, to finish off this album mm-hmm. at, at home and her dad engineered it. Which is, so, you know, very yeah. convenient for yeah. the situation at hand. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. yeah. You know, COVID as well. Moving back to help them. Everything lined up for yeah. things to happen in this way. Yeah. I think uh, Henry said that uh, pre-COVID, like uh, the, the drummer, Teddy came over to his house to record tambourine and Henry was like, oh, that's probably the last person I'll ever see <laughs> for a long while. This was just after lockdown, essentially. So nobody yeah. knew what the yeah. future was going to hold. Yeah. And so, yeah, like this brings us back to what we were saying earlier about finishing it off remotely, emails and stuff like that. Um, and and the other thing to say about this is Henry himself plays guitar in the band, but he also is the guy that heads up like the production, engineering and mixing of all of the music. Right. Um, EPs and albums and... That was the other thing about this album. Uh, I noticed it as well, and an interviewer noticed it and asked the question that was like, there's a very different shift in production quality from even the previous EP that just came out, Big Days, Mm -hmm. to this album. The interviewer asked, what was that? You know, what was that change? They didn't have anyone new. They didn't work with any other producers. It was just basically that Henry dove deeper into learning about mixing and engineering and just really honed his skills and that's insane because now it sounds like polished really good production quality you can also hear this they did the kxp at home thing Mm -hmm. they recorded in a studio in chicago and uh henry mixed the audio for that as well okay great really nice lush sound on like the drums and Mm -hmm. everything like that kind of thing so yeah, I think that was, that, yeah. I like that video a lot. It looks very yeah. nice too. Yeah, just really visually pleas- cinem- pleasing with the lights and cinematic. Yeah, very. Yeah. yeah, I would love to do a video with Definitely. you know yeah. my music or our music or you know yeah, yeah anybody. It just looks really good. I like that vibe. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I think like that's kind of his other role in the band as well. Was like taking once all of these ideas are sent to him and these songs are written, kind of thing. He, I think, one of the ways he said this is like he thinks about the world that these tracks live in and i mm-hmm. think by that he means like the sonic like production quality mm-hmm. or something like that i think because he will he will spend a lot of time by himself working on that aspect of things like the the sound of every instrument and the mix and stuff yeah like how that, they so. relate to each other yeah, in yeah. the yeah. audio soundscape yeah 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 very cool and when you so. you know it, it shows i think a lot of people who i've seen talk about this comments and anecdotes and stuff people love the way these guys sound like yeah. People make a lot of comments on how the track sounds and how the instruments work together and yeah. just the production of it sounds very nice and clean and good and it works really well for their their sound yeah, yeah. in Definitely. particular. Yeah, yeah. And, and harkening back to the KEXP, that one's mixed very well too. Yeah, yeah. They have top-notch guys as well. Yeah. Um, not to compare and contrast mm. engineers and mixers or whatever, but right. yeah, yeah. the KEXP guys always do a really great job, so that's a really nice one to listen to as well if you guys want to check out cool. yeah, Slow yeah. Pulp. yeah, yeah nice good good album all the way through though yeah yeah it's pretty like cohesive except for that one piano track um but it does <laughs> yeah. have a cool story I, uh, it, <laughs> throwing shade on the, the yeah. piano track. <laughs> i am a little bit but <laughs> it's okay to be critical Mm-mm. even about things that you love mm-hmm. you know it's all good vibes mm. and i'm allowed yeah. to feel however i want jay that's true yeah yes. thank you everybody yeah. um but that's my soapbox that's slow pulp what yeah. else we got i got nothing Pretty much, I mean, they're super new, um, just getting started. I mean, they've done EPs since 2015, mm-hmm. 2017, really, if you include Emily on vocals. Um, and this album really marks the turning, well, I think Big Day marked the turning point in songwriting, but this album really set the new tone of who they are as a band and what they're doing, I think. Yeah, that, um, that's truly... Yeah, one of the most important things that they've done in like their lives, I think. Yeah, yeah. They would say, um, yeah. it's just it's a really great achievement. Yeah, it's a really great album. Yeah, for some people who are going through some hard times, even. Yeah, you know, and I think uh, musically they feel like they've hit their strides. So they're like ready to do it again, ready to do another album. They said that's the only uh, thing I read. They were yeah, starting to yeah. gear up to do another one, kind of getting those energies, yeah, you know, integrated. Yeah, so they can synergize. 
And the touring thing, uh, not doing their own tours yet, but it's insane how they've been able to get on these support slots. Low-key, the support slots are even more valuable than a headline slot. I think so. As you're getting started, like, for sure. to be able to do that um, is great, you know, and yeah, I only, I saw this as we started recording the episode that they're going to do the Cab for Cutie thing, and I feel like they're pretty big, so, and it's in Europe as well, not the States, so... That is, I mean, international, baby. Yeah, so that's like, I think if you haven't heard of Slow Pulp yet, you have now, and you probably will in more so yeah. in the future. Like, <laughs> so go see him at a city near you, yeah. at a venue near you, and let's play out. This has been fun. This was a good one, Jay. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Um, that's all I got. If you guys got cool uh, facts or uh, anything you want to say what's up, hit us up at the email. Jay's got it for us. Roots to Grooves at signalradio.com. S I G N L radio.com. to Grooves is a production of Signal Radio. For more music and independent culture, visit signalradio.com. That's S-I-G-N-L radio.com.